Hi, I'm Rick Dior and I'm just playing some paradiddle singles and doubles and different sticking combinations. So these kinds of stickings are pretty much the foundation for drumming. If you just play singles all the time, you're going to be a pretty boring drummer. Learning these kinds of combinations, of course, is part of learning your rudiments and studying different books. And one of the books I'd like to use for these kinds of sticking combinations is Joe Morello's Master Studies, Volume 2. So today we're going to be working on the second section of that book, which is called Paradiddle Combinations. This is one of my favorite sections uh, of both his books. I really just like the way it's laid out. I like the way he adds fill-ins with it. It's very, very challenging. It's great for your technique. And it's also good for playing accents, which is, for a lot of drummers, pretty difficult. So we're going to go over the way that I play it and I work on it, and the way also that I worked on it with Joe. So the first thing you need to remember is when you're playing these, you got to be relaxed at all times. All the accents are done either with a whip stroke or a wrist stroke. Now the wrist stroke is also uh, combined with this clinch, which I'm doing here. Again, when I say wrist stroke, I don't mean do this. Never a full stroke. It's a stroke like this. So you're always using that clinch for your accent rather than a full stroke, which will slow you down. So that clinch, you can keep it low, creates a lot of power. So you'll see with these exercises, it really um, works with this kind of clinch slash wrist accent. The first thing you should practice before you do these is this particular thing. And I'll put on the metronome at 108. And it's going to be on a subdivision of eighth notes. So the exercises are written in eighth notes. You can also think of those as sixteenths. So if you put your metronome on sixteenth subdivision in 108, that's where I'm doing it, okay? But it's really double time. It would be 216. One, two, three, four. So that's not written in the book. That's just an exercise I do to get warmed up to these kinds of things. So however fast you can do those two strokes and then a hit, that's going to be your tempo. Because none of these use any more than two strokes on either hand and then an accent. So once again, it's like doing this. So you drop it and then you clinch with your wrist. So the first stroke is you drop the double and might maybe support it a little with your fingers, but then the important stroke is that accent. Now you see the way my bottom two fingers are getting out of the way. They're regulating the stick once I need to stop it. But otherwise they're out of the way, like that. And then these top fingers should stay very close or even on the stick, and your thumb is also helping. Now you should never be tight up here. If you're making facial expressions and you're clenching your jaw, then you know you got a problem. That's where tension manifests itself in your upper body and your face. So if you look in the mirror and you're doing that kind of thing and you know, ticks, nervous ticks and whatnot, you know you're tight, all right? So that tension, there shouldn't be any, but if, if there is a little at first, it needs to flow right out of you, so.
So these kinds of things where you play taps and then an accent, that's pretty much the most difficult physical stroke in drumming. And to do that without tension is extremely difficult. And it takes a lot of practice. It's very physical. And it doesn't come naturally to most people. So these exercises are great for developing that. And you want to start them really slow. So when I first started working on these, I would do them about this slow. This is page 16, number one. So we'll use the metronome so you can hear it. So if we're at 100, it sounds like this. So that's exercise number one, and you see how my hands are working there with that stroke, that tap, and then the, the clinch and the slight wrist stroke, okay? But again, nothing up here. There's no Muller technique, nothing like that. It's all wrists and fingers. Great, and the good news is that, that these apply themselves really well to left hand kind of jazz things. You know, it really strengthens that left that left hand or that weak hand. Okay, so we'll split the difference today. We won't do them too fast. I, I do these as fast as 120, which is pretty pretty fast. And we won't do that so you can tell what's going on. I also have another way of doing these. Let's put the metronome maybe on 108. That's a good tempo. I like to do a check pattern in between. That's not written in the book, but I'll do two bars of paradiddles to relax my hands if there is any tension. So I'll show you that first one, and I'll count off. So here's the paradiddles. One, two, three, four. Okay, so and then in between that and number two, I do another set of paradiddles just to relieve any tension. One, two, three, four. 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 
So that's the first two pages. Then if you turn the page, there's another page of them. And these are even more difficult. Uh, so this is page 18, and we'll do some of these for you the same way. One, two, three, four. So the next page, page 19, uses these same previous exercises, but now we're going to do fill-ins with these. And there's two ways to do them. You can do them staccato with your wrist, so this kind of stroke. And again, you're not holding the stick tight. You're just letting uh, that stick bounce, but you are following it with your wrist. The other way to do it is just fingers. So a little tiny bit of wrist, but mostly fingers. So here's how that sounds. We'll put the metronome on 190 and we're subdividing the 16th note. Now remember that is a little bit different than the actual way it looks here. So as long as that 16th is subdivided, you're good to go. All right, uh, you can do it any way you want. There's lots of metronome settings you can use. One, two, three, four. So that's wrist. Now here's some fingers doing the same thing. One, two, three, four. Okay, it looks similar, but it's, it's not exactly similar because I'm using more fingers in the second one. So let's go through some of these for you at this tempo. And there's, I don't do a check pattern with these. I just play them straight through. So we'll just play this whole page for you, page 19. One, two, three, four. So that was using a little uh, more of the wrist method there, okay? And this section goes on for many pages. We won't play them all for you. It'll take forever. And then he does the same thing uh, on page 22, but this time he uses double strokes. Now this can go even faster because you are playing a lot of double strokes, but, uh, but there are singles as well mixed in. So the first one, number one, 
same tempo sounds like this. One, two, three, four. So on those doubles, you want to make sure you're just bouncing. All right, so let's play some of these for you back to back, two times each, and here we go. One, two, three, four. All right, these are great. They're super fun and uh, they're difficult. Okay, you're gonna have to go slow, maybe start this fast. The trick to speed is starting slow and gradually increasing the metronome without getting tight. The only way you can play these fast and use them musically, in other words, a relaxed way when you're playing, so you're not using your arms, is to start slow and then use the right techniques to play them fast. So once again, you can play them legato or staccato. Now instead of the sixteenths or the doubles, we have buzzes. So the first one sounds like this. So again, you're substituting that paradiddle stroke, that fast 16th that has been in the previous exercises, with just... And now when you play those, you don't want to press into the head too hard, just like this. Okay? So let's try uh, these again at the same tempo. I'll play these for you twice each. One, two, three, four. So that's that page. And again, it goes on for a few more pages. It's the same formula for each of these variations. And it's exactly the same. He's just changing it with these different fill-ins, which is really great because you already know the patterns, so you're just changing them up slightly and, and adding some new techniques. The doubles, the, the quick paradiddles, and then, you know, with the fill-ins, and then the buzzes. On page 28, he starts in with a pretty cool section called Variations of the Triple Paradiddle. Uh, once again, <laughs> I keep saying it, I really love this whole paradiddle thing. I think paradiddles are the key to everything. It's a perfect rudiment. It's a great mix of singles and doubles. And if you know your triple, double, and single paradiddles, that can get you out of any jam. And especially if you know the permutations of them, permutations, so you're moving over the beat one note, so instead of right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, it could be right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. So this is your foundation for all your really cool, you know, funk and Latin grooves uh, that are linear, you know, that are broken up between the hands. So these are the stickings you need to learn for those if you want to be an interesting sounding drummer. So this, these triple paradiddles work with accents. So in other words, the first one sounds like this. So the singles are done just with the wrists, kind of a bounce stroke, 
and then the doubles are done with a clinch. So you're doing a, a wrist stroke and then clinching the double. Don't do this. Or this. You want to do this. So the, what happens in each one, he changes them up. It's almost like a permutation where you're moving where that accent is, but you're still doing a triple paradiddle. So let's try some of these. A good tempo, and again, you want to subdivide on sixteenths, uh, so or subdivide on eighths, whatever you want to do in your metronome. I always leave my metronome on sixteenths when I'm doing these. So if you do it at 120, that first one sounds like this. So that's 120 with the 16ths, it would be 240 with the 8ths, just so that's clear. So let's go through this page, page 28. Uh, we'll do each one maybe four times. One, two, three, four. So next we come to page 29, and these are the same triple paradiddle exercises, but now you do them with fill-ins. And these are pretty tricky, so I recommend starting out with an exercise uh, like this. So. So once again, let the stick bounce but you're controlling those accents with your clinch. So the last one's a clinch. I call those bursts when you just do singles very quickly. And they're really useful on drum set, especially if you're playing short fills, catching figures, things like that. They're great for fills. So. One, two, three, four. This is a check pattern. Back to the check pattern. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Page 30 is really fun. Uh, these are uh, 
uh, variations of triple paradiddles, but in triplets this time. Very useful for jazz. And this is confusing. You're looking at a lot of stickings here. So one thing I do is I go in there and I circle all the accented uh, notes. So if you have two rights, I'll circle those. Two lefts, you'll circle those as well. These are hard to get through as a group. You just start like getting sort of hypnotized by them. So sometimes I'll take a little break or I will play a check pattern. So let's play these uh, a couple times through each for you. And I'll put the metronome on 170. And that is the exact subdivision here. And we'll put it on triplets. So, and I'll play the check pattern first. One, two, three, four. 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 I love those. They're so much fun. All right, and you can do them faster if you want, but um, again, you need to learn them. And I practice many, 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 many hours on this stuff. It's very relaxing for me. I do it almost every day. It keeps my old hands in shape, and that's the way you learn them. I almost have them memorized, but I'm reading them because I'm doing this video, and I don't want to mess it up so people get confused. All right, and then the next thing we have is uh, page 31, the bottom of that, which is just the fill-ins. The same thing as before, uh, just you're filling in those notes with sixteenths. All right, and this goes on for several pages. Okay, so I think we're going to stop here. This is going to be a really long video, and uh, the next thing we'll do will be triplet variations. That'll be the next video, which is starts on page thirty-four. This whole book again is different from the first one, where you know you have. Uh, just the concept of taking one idea, one sticking, and using fill-ins and different doubles and buzzes to, uh, to develop that, which is a really organized, practical way to practice. So that's why I like this book so much. The first book was more of his whole philosophy uh, of the, you know, stick control and accents and rebounds of George Stone. It was kind of almost the third volume, in my opinion, of that stuff. This is all Joe this. This is what he lived and breathed, this kind of exercise. And if you went to a lesson with him, you would be doing lots of this. So hope you enjoy this and we'll see you soon with the um, third installment from this book. Thanks.